By now, all you guys should know the importance of pegging out jewel holes. The effect on your service when the jewel holes are not pegged out can actually lower your potential amplitude by as much as 10 to 15 degrees. Someone asked me a question about pegging balanced jewels, and it's the one thing that you really never hear about. The question was primarily about pegging out the balance hole jewels for movements that have shock settings, but this is also going to apply to pocket watch balance jewels as well. Today, I'm gonna to show you the method I use to peg out these tiny little pivot holes, and it's gonna be a lot easier than you may think. And if you do this, it'll make you a better watchmaker. All right, let's look at the shock setting in a movement that I'm currently making a video about. I'm gonna start by taking out the shock spring and then removing the chateau and end stone and just dropping it into a diamond cleaning jar with hexane. It really only needs to soak for a minute or two, but I'm gonna leave it here until I'm actually ready for it. Now, if you don't have hexane, 99%, Pure IPA is a pretty good substitute as well. And just so you know, all the materials that I'm using in this video, I'll put links to them in the description just in case you want to check them out. Now, once the Chateau has been soaking for a minute or two, then I just agitate the jar by shaking it back and forth just to create some movement between the jewel hole and the liquid. Then I just grab the Chateau out of the diamond jar and put it on a clean piece of watch paper. Now I'm going to pick from my assortment of balance staff tools that I actually showed you how to make in the video entitled Stop Losing Diafix Springs, which I'll also leave a link for in the description as well. What I'm looking for is one that fits a little tighter into the hole than normal. I don't want it to be so tight that I have to force it in the hole. It should really just barely fit in. Now I'm just gonna dip the pivot at the end of my tool into a little bit more hexane or IPA, whatever you have, and I'm just gonna drop it into the jewel hole. You just lightly spin it a few times, flip the jewel over, and just repeat the same process on the other side. Now I'm gonna Put it back into the diamond jar and just give it a few more shakes just to clean anything on it that might be there. It's really just that simple. Now, another question that comes up all the time is how to lay a consistent drop of oil on the end stone that's repeatable. Now, as I've talked about in other videos, it's important that each stone has the same amount of lubrication on both sides of the balance wheel. If they're not, it can cause differences in amplitude between the two horizontal positions. Well, if you watch my video on watch lubrication, you know that I store my 9010 and HP 1300 in syringes. That way I can control exactly how much oil I put in my pot at any one time without wasting any. So let's start by lubricating four end stones real quick, and I'll show you just how easy it is. So obviously the first step is to make sure that the end stone surface is clean and free of all the old lubricant. Now, just in case you've never seen this done at all, the end stone has two surfaces, one flat and one domed, and we're gonna lubricate the flat side of the jewel. To lubricate the jewel, I use my black Bergeron oiler, which has been polished, and I make sure that it's clean and free of any other oils. Because I know the amount of oil in my oil pot, I can merely stick the oiler straight into the 9010. Now, typical problems that some people run into are that the jewel sticks to the oiler when they're trying to apply the oil to it. This is most often caused because the oiler came in contact with the jewel. Ideally, you wanna have a perfectly round drop sitting 
in the center of the jewel. But just know if it's offset a little bit, that doesn't really matter nearly as much as the amount of oil on both jewels being the same. The key here is to touch the oil drop to the center of the jewel without the oiler coming in contact with the end stone. Now, when the oil comes in contact with the jewel, it's going to pull the oil off the tip of the oiler into a perfect bead. So here's one jewel oiled. Here's the second jewel. The third jewel. And the fourth jewel. Now, because I'm able to insert the oiler into the pot in the same way every time, I'm pulling the same amount of oil out of the oil pot. When you look at the oil spots on these jewels, you'll notice that they are as close to being the exact same size and the same amount as you could possibly get. Now, when the chateau is laid on top of the end stone, this bead of oil on the jewel allows the chaton when it touches the bead to stick together. With the two pieces now assembled, we can inspect our oil spot through the end stone and see that we have the perfect circle of oil in the middle of the jewel. Well, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them below. I'd love to hear them and I'll answer as many as I can. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.